Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at an overview of the project requirements for our Contacts Manager application. So you might recall that the goals of this course are to teach you some intermediate Java things with object-oriented programming. And then we're going to apply those concepts into an application in Android Studio. And so the purpose of this video is to look at the uh, Contacts Manager Project uh, Requirements document and see what some of the important details are in here and uh, we'll start working on Milestone 1 in the next video. So the uh, objective here for our project is to create a Contacts Manager application that demonstrates object-oriented principles in Java and Android Studio. So some of the concepts that you have seen already in our class are already listed here. So the object-oriented um, pillars, you might call them. So inheritance, encapsulation, abstract classes, interfaces, polymorphisms, and generics, which we haven't seen yet, perhaps, but we will actually get to those soon. So the software that we'll need for this project is Eclipse, which uh, we've already worked on, Android Studio, which you should uh, take a look at the previous videos to see that we need quite a bit of memory and processing power to make this work properly, as well as Source Tree, which is a nice uh, tool for managing uh, backups online in the uh, repositories. So you'll also see Maven and Gradle, which are dependency managers. These are the programs that automatically install libraries that we've requested to do some extra work for us. So we'll do versioning control and online backups using Git repositories. You will also see that we'll use our design principles that have been taught in other classes. So nLayer design is important in every software development package that you create. In Android Studio, you will be working with the concepts of layouts for each activity, with an activity as a screen, controls such as buttons and menus. You'll be look, looking at click listeners, which are the event handlers for each object on the screen. List adapters, which is a nice way of saying just uh, lists, and then uh, intents, an activity lifestyle, life cycle, which is switching screens, switching apps in your program. So the milestones that we're going to be doing are seven. The first milestone in what I'm going to show you in the next video is how are we going to design our application. So we will create a UML, a diagram that shows our classes. We will create wireframes, which shows all of the screens and drawn just in a rough draft pencil form. And then we will, we will work with an interactive mock-up demo so we can test out our application on an actual screen and, and see if we're missing anything. You can see the rest of the items that were ahead of us. We're going to be coding the classes, so we will create Java code. Then we will make our full application run in a console version of our application. So just um, using Eclipse and not into Android Studio yet. Number four is our objective to create a way to save our data in a file, a text file. And this is where we're going to introduce uh, a new library that will help us format the data nicely. Then number five, six, and seven are all with Android Studio. So in five, we will create the layout of our application. Six, we will create the code. And in seven, we will include some of the capabilities of Android itself, so making phone calls, sending texts, an email, and using Google Maps for some of our operations. The first section that you'll see in our document is called User Stories. And so User Stories are a good place to start if you are trying to figure out what your user wants you to build. And so pretend that this is actually for a client that wanted the custom app. And so you don't get to invent the requirements, you have to find out what your user wants. And a user story is how you do that. So for instance, it says here, a user story is written in the form of who does what, and it has to have a reason. For example, let's look at the first one. As a user, I want to save text data about a contact, which includes address, phone, and email, so I can find the information at a later date. A very simple statement that describes the core functionality of our program. Now there are lots more. So I have more requirements that say things about our photos and our business hours and the description of a person. Then I have requirements that I put into category two, which is about managing your contacts. So I want to be able to sort them. I want to be able to search for them. 
I want to be able to edit them and delete them. And then finally last is the communications. So I want to be able to send text messages, phone calls, navigate, and look at their web page. Now the uh, future development is part four, which probably we won't get to, but I'm going to leave it in here anyway because you'll probably have some of us in our group that are more advanced and get done quickly, and this would be a great way to extend your knowledge. And so those are extra for future development. A couple of notes here on user accounts and security. So we won't have a login page. We're just going to assume that everyone with this app has access to your contacts. So not very secure, but it simplifies our program development. Data storage says uh, that our application will initially have no method for storing the data. We'll have to re-enter it every time. But then quickly in milestone four, we will use the text file of uh, JSON formatted data. Our contacts manager will be implemented in two parts. So we're focusing on the Java application to begin with, so the first part is just console app. The second part is Android. So we will take all of the code that we developed in the first part and simply import it into Android Studio, and we will separate our logic and our data management from the interface. So let's take a look at milestone number one. The first thing that we have to do is start design. Design is the most important part of an application design pro uh, development process. If you make mistakes in design, they're relatively easy to fix. You can correct things. There's not a lot of time invested. Now I realize that design is not always the most fun part of an application development, but it's critical. Look at this graphic here on the website called Six Sigma. And we've got a page that shows the relative cost for fixing software defects in the stages of development. So let's say we're in design stage number one here in the first column. We realize that we have created a problem in the way we've uh, built the, pro the program. The user doesn't like it or it doesn't work or it's too complex. We, there's some reason why we can't use the design. If we can fix that, it's simply an eraser and a pencil. However, if you go into implementation, the cost is six times greater as far as cost to your hours and to your productivity. When we get into testing, it jumps to 15, and if for some reason you've launched the program, it's out in the world, and people are using it, and you need to make a correction, the cost of correcting it is 100 times greater than if you were to catch that error at the beginning. So design is worth the investment in the long run. So as we design our program, we're going to start by looking at our classes. So we will define all of the methods and properties of each class, as well as the relationships between them. So recall that a UML diagram looks like this here. This is not the contacts app application diagram, but it shows you many of the features that we will be using, such as properties, classes, methods. It will show you the uh, aggregation and the composition relationships. It will show you which classes are abstract, and so we will be using a design that looks something like this. So here are some of the classes that we will be building in our app. First of all, it's a contact app. So we are going to create a base contact, which will hold the majority of what a contact can do. And then following that, we have two different kinds of contacts. We have personal contacts and we have business contacts. Both of them share many things in common. And so the base contact could be defined maybe as an abstract class. So the next item, number four here, is our class called address book. It will contain a list of all of our contacts. And so some methods that are used to manage those contacts are display one, remove, sort by, and search. Number five, we will get into with the uh, data saving or storage. We are going to have two methods that will just read all of our contacts and save all of our contacts. And so pretty simple data management there. We're not going to save one contact at a time. We're just going to save the entire collection in one fell swoop. But data access service can be implemented in two different ways. In number six, this is the application that we're going to be using is the file access service. So this is file I.O. We're going to save our items in a text file. In another implementation of our app, we could use the SQL database. And so there's uh, MySQLite, I believe it is, in uh, Android that we could use. 
but we're not going to implement that in this version of our application. I'll, s I'll let you do that as an extension. Now business service is a very high level class. This will have an address book instance and it will contain methods to save and load all elements in our address book. So this is kind of the top of the chart of who is in charge of the application. Number nine, we're going to have a temporary class that we will not use in our final version, but it is the console app. The console app is the uh, text version of our application. Part two, we're going to create a wireframe design. So the first thing in our design process is to come up with a storyboard. How does our user enter the application? What are the options to click on or to menu choose from? and where does it go from there. So think of all of the operations that are in the methods of the classes and they should find their place somewhere on the um, map of our application. So you can see this is a very uh, rough version of a site map. It shows you the navigation between each screen on our application and it tells you in the line what buttons are going to be clicked to get to that screen. A nice process to get to that is to perhaps use sticky notes. Sticky notes are easily removed, they can be thrown away, they can be changed, and so working on a desktop or a whiteboard with lines is a great way to come up with a nice sitemap. Then we're going to go into the next phase, which is drawing the screens, so the wireframes themselves. So a wireframe probably will look something like this here. We have ourselves all the screens of our phone and the menus and so you can see that it's starting to take shape. We've got our functions built in and now we're getting the visible uh, design. Then the last thing is after we have all these photographs taken we're going to use a application at uh, marvelapp.com. And so here's what Marvel App looks like when it's running. So I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of what it does. So I've taken a drawing and I have imported it into my phone and you can see that I have lots of pictures. And then if I want to run the app, I simply click the little triangle, and now I have the application as I drew it with a pencil. So here you can see that we have a search button. And now it shows me that I've searched for some users, and you can see all of the contacts. So if I pick one, and then it brings up the details of that contact. You can see there's more buttons. So if I choose the phone button, it says we're going into the phone call app. And so the uh, back button is up there, and now if I want to do texting, I get the same thing. So this program here lets you see in a quick view if you've forgotten any of the screens. And so for instance, if you choose a button here and it doesn't lead anywhere, it's time to draw another wireframe screen. And so Marvel App is a great tool to see your app in final form without having to do any development. And the big advantage is your user, your, your customer, can see what you're developing and can give you valuable feedback, whether it is what they want or not. And as you as the developer, it helps you see where there are gaps, where you have forgotten to design a class or a screen or some other part of a vital piece of your application. So we finally get to, de to the deliverables of our application design. So first of all, we're going to have some Word documents. One will show a UML diagram of everything that you've created as far as your classes go. Then the second is showing the application flow or the sitemap. And then finally, the uh, pictures of your wireframes that are built into your phone application. And so you'll have a pretty good idea of what your final product will look like after you finish up with these deliverables. In the next video, I'm going to show you some practical steps for how to build these things and uh, not quite step by step, but pretty close of how you need to create milestone number one.